guys so a lot of you guys have been sending me a lot of messages on Facebook and Instagram in regards to ultrasound sonography and sonography programs in general so I figured today I'll be taking the time to answer some frequently asked questions that you guys always ask me and just have it in a little video so you guys can find it a little bit more helpful all right so first question is is there a lot of math involved oh my gosh you guys ask me this a lot I'm gonna say no the only math classes that I had to take in my program and before my program was just taking college level math that was just my general education classes that I took and then also I took statistics but that was just because it was a requirement for another ultrasound program I was thinking about applying to I would say the only type of math that you would get involved in is maybe like converting units um, in physics we use a unit called Hertz for frequencies so megahertz all of that we also measure a lot of organs and pathologies like centimeters and millimeters so I would say that would be the most you would ever have to do with math um, ultrasound physics doesn't involve math like as in numbers or anything like solving equations no math involved at all though how long is the program and how long does it take to be a sonographer, including the prerequisites? So my ultrasound program is a two-year program. Uh, the reason why it's a two-year program is because it offers a degree and a certification. How the program schedule goes is that we start in the summer for our first year. So we go summer, fall, spring. And then once we're in our second year, it goes summer, fall, winter, spring and then you're done. How long does it take to be a sonographer? So when I started the program, I was 19 years old, and then now that I'm finishing up my program, I'm going to be 21, and I'm gonna be a registered sonographer at 21, so I'm pretty excited about that. That's just because when I graduated high school, I started taking my prerequisites right away as soon as I can, and I try to take as many classes as I can to apply to the program in a short amount of time because I was just ready to get into the field. So my prerequisites only took about a year and a half. I wouldn't say maybe, maybe two years because I had to wait to apply, but that was about it. And then the whole program itself is a two-year program. Also, of course, these answers may vary according to your program's prerequisite. Um, my program is two years. A lot of other ultrasound programs would be about maybe like 13 months or 12 months. Uh, those are a little bit more accelerated though, so I do appreciate how my program is two years. And then like I said before, it offers a degree as well. All right, what's the difference between a associate's and a bachelor's degree in diagnostic medical sonography? So I would say the main difference is nothing. Um, I feel like if you get an associate's degree, you still have the same amount of education as a bachelor's degree. I feel like people who pursue a degree in um, diagnostic medical sonography as a bachelor's is either to become maybe like a lead tech or maybe a supervisor of a radiology department. I wouldn't say that it is a requirement to do. I don't see any more pay benefits in getting a bachelor's. There's definitely no one up. The most important thing that you need to get to be a sonographer is um, your certification, as in taking your uh, registry board exams. I don't think there's any benefit in getting a difference between associates or a bachelor's or a degree at all. I think as if you get your registry done, then that's the only important thing that you need to do. How much does the program cost? Okay, so of course my answers are gonna vary because I'm going to be specifically talking about my program. I'm from the Maryland area and the program I go to is Montgomery College. It is a community college. I was offered in-state tuition, so of course it was a little bit cheaper. I would say overall, the whole two years that I've been in the program, it probably does not even hit $10,000. Um, I think when I was calculating, it was probably like $8,500 about there for the whole program. I do know other programs such as like UMBC and John Hopkins, like more prestigious programs do cost a little bit more. Um, I don't know specifically, but my program did not cost that much. What do you have? Popcorn. My boyfriend got me some food. Thank you. Can you work and go to school? I would say 
for your first year, I think you can work. It is possible. I only say that because you aren't going to clinicals as often as you would be in your second year. So there was some time to go to work. Um, a lot of my classmates also went to work during their first year. Um, we also have to keep in mind that not only are you going to clinicals, but you also have schoolwork to do. Uh, even when I went to clinicals one day a week, I also had to find time to study. And then also I had to take my quizzes and tests on campus. So I probably lived about 30 minutes away from my school and finding time just to go up there just to take like a 10 minute quiz or a hour and a half to two hour test was also time consuming. So you also have to keep in mind of that. This question I get a lot, I don't know why, but the question is, do you get paid for going to clinicals? I have never heard of a school that would pay you to go to clinicals. When you go to clinicals, this is a hospital or doctor's office giving their time and efforts to teach you and have you basically be like an intern and shadow them. You do not get paid. It is a requirement. Um, we take a clinical course class and it is a requirement for you to do your clinical rotations. rotations. Um, so no, you don't get paid. You're paying them for you to go. Um, next question, how many times a week and how many hours a day do I attend clinicals? So like I said, my first year I only attended clinicals one day a week. On average it's a eight and a half hour a day. So it's kind of like doing a full day of work. In my second year, I started off with three days a week. Um, of course, eight and a half hour days. I had to hit a certain amount of hours before the semester was over. And then once, I wanna say, maybe my fall, winter, and spring semester of my second year, I had to go about four to five times a week. Um, I went four days a week if I was able to do it. And then I went five days a week if I had to miss any other days and I had to make up the hours because of course you also have to hit a certain amount of hours. For example, my spring semester I had to hit about 480 clinical hours before the semester's over. Um, I think for my winter semester I had to hit about 120 hours and it was probably like a three or four week course so that was pretty stressful. I had to go five days a week. Um, of course, while also going four to five times a week I also had to find time to study for exams. Um, I did have to take some exams on campus, so any off day that I had, I was spending time at school. How do I specialize in a specific ultrasound field? So I am in the general track of sonography. Um, it's under registered diagnostic medical sonography. There's different tracks such as echocardiography and vascular. Um, so I'm in the general track and with the general track of my program, we are able to sit for our abdomen board exam and also our OBGYN board exam. A lot of people think going into ultrasound, um, it's about scanning babies and all that pregnant people, but there's a lot more to go in with it. And when I say abdomen ultrasound, that includes um, all the abdominal organs. I also have to learn to scan small parts such as scrotums and thyroids. Um, the OB exam also includes not just OB but also GYN, so it's basically about woman reproductive system such as pregnancy and the menstrual cycle and all the GYN organs. So a lot of people ask if they could just specialize in one, so yes you can. You have the choice to either just, just take your abdomen board exam or just take your OB. My program requires me to take both. Um, also. There are other specialties you could go into, such as breast ultrasound. Um, you would have to sit for a board exam for that. And then also maybe vascular. Nowadays, if you're a general sonographer, you do also have to learn vascular. Um, there's so many different certifications that you could do in OBGYN, such as um, umbilical artery and nuchal translucency, which is critical in first trimester screening. There's many certifications you get into um, after you take your board exams afterwards. Next question is, how hard is it landing a job? As a student, sometimes it is a little bit difficult to get a job because they think that you're not able to um, perform ultrasound as good as someone who's experienced, but you have to start out somewhere. So I would recommend that as a student, if you could land any job that you can, I would take it because you need to get that experience. And then afterwards you could use that experience and use it somewhere else 
that you may enjoy. Sometimes, if you're lucky, you can get hired at your clinical site. Um, I do know a lot of my classmates do have job offerings from their clinical sites. I also do myself. Um, getting job interviews and job opportunities from your clinical site is a great opportunity. They already know who you are. They already know how skilled you are. So um, if you're able to get a job at your clinical site and you love it, then definitely take it. Next question, are there any other requirements for attending clinicals while in the diagnostic medical sonography program? I would say the only requirements that you need to maintain is definitely your grades and your other courses. Also maintaining all your competencies that you have to do for your clinical classes. Um, another requirement you need to do annually is a annual criminal background check and have your immunizations up to date. And also you do need to be CPR certified, I do believe. Um, my program, we have to have it by American Heart Association for healthcare providers, and that needs to be renewed every two years. All right, next one. What can I expect to learn at different clinical sites? So what your program is probably gonna do is assign you to different clinical sites, such as either a hospital setting or a doctor's office or an outpatient center. Um, what this does is just gets you to get experience in each different type of setting and then maybe at the end you kind of decide on what you like uh, for example let's see my first year I was mostly in a I was at um, a community radiology which is the outpatient setting and I typically liked that better um, the summer following I was assigned to a hospital and a doctor's office it was like a private practice um, after the hospital I kind of found out that I didn't like the hospital setting. I would prefer more of an outpatient setting, but of course, um, different sonographers like different things. So uh, being just in different environments is very helpful in helping you decide on what you like and what you want to do in regards to this field. All right, guys, if you have any other questions, feel free to contact me on Instagram at ChristyDMS, or also you could comment below if you have any other questions that I didn't answer. Be sure to like and subscribe.